Christ. You murdered him. An old man. And you murdered him. Shut up. You little fool. Now listen to me. You're going to do as I say, do you? I'm your father and you'll do as I say. You are not my father. I'm the Prince of Wales. The king is my father. All right, I've had enough of this madness. Hold your tongue, you little brat, if you know what's good for you. Most heartily. It is good to see you laugh again, sire. I'm glad you are my friend. It is my wish to help you. Tomorrow, if the king approves, you and I will go to Hampton Court. Hampton Court? It is your highness' favorite place. Many happy days have you spent there playing by the river. Perhaps the sight of it again will restore your memory. But we'll speak no more of this. Let us walk and talk of happier matters. I might know another funny story. Well, rest. You're very thoughtful tonight. Hmm? <laughs> I'm considering the error of my ways. You're not the sort. To her. Do they come such? No. Tomorrow, God willing, I shall be home. And that, sweet Anne, is ample food for thought. How long have you been traveling? Oh, a year and more. I was dispatched to seek my fortune. When did you find it? I found you. There's fortune in any man's eyes. I'll bid you good night. <laughs> Too late, my friend. Open the door. Open the door, <laughs> Too late and yet too early by the size of you, young sir. Oh, what place is this? No place for you. I ask a civil question, sir. Then I'll ask one. Why aren't you home and asleep? I need your help. Then I shall give it. I'm Edward, Prince of Wales. <laughs> and I, sir, your good servant, Miles Hendon. Protect me, Hendon, and you shall be well rewarded. A year to seek my fortune, and I find it not 30 miles from the gate. Now listen well. Your Highness. First, we must ride to the palace. When we are there, I shall inform. What's he been saying? He asks protection, presumably from you. Give him here. First, an explanation. What's the boy to you? For what business it is of yours, I'm his father. She's alive! I'll skin your eye for you! Father or no, you're too rough by half, sir. He's not my father. I've told you who I am. I'll settle with you later. <laughs> oh, 
I thank you, Mild Sentence. You have saved me injury and shame. Perchance my life and so the crown. Still the prince, eh? Now we must ride. <laughs> First, some sleep. But there is no... What you say is right. I'm tired. I've journeyed all day. Have a room prepared for me. <laughs> if you will kindly follow me, Your Highness. We have a problem, however. There is but one room, and that is mine. I shall, of course, be honored. Your Highness? His Majesty, your father, would speak with you. something of yourself. My father is Sir Richard Hendon of Hendon Hall. Perchance your highness knows him. The name escapes my memory. As is the custom, Hugh, my brother, inherits the estate, whilst I, the second son, have been dispatched to seek some suitable profession. You find me on the last night of my journey home, with no profession, sad to say, but perhaps some newfound understanding. Understanding? Of what? Oh, that a man must live by his wits and too often by his sword. That we must judge a man for what he is and not for what he seems to be. And more. Much more. But you, my ragged friend, a gentle pauper who calls himself a prince, it is a new one for all my travelling. Grace the princess here as you commanded. Uh, 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 I was afraid that you had been taken from me. Uh, I have dreamed the most hideous dream. <laughs> Listen to me. You must trust no one. No one. His Majesty's mind is so beset by constant anxiety for your safety, sir. Trust no one. No one. You should have woken me. I'd have found you another bed. Are you still sleeping? Oh, as though he hasn't slept for days. Poor little devil. Aye. And with a mystery of sorts. Still, we'll know the answer soon enough when he wakes refreshed. Meantime, he needs clothing. I'll ride into the village. You have a soft heart, Master Hendon, for all your fancy plumage. <laughs> if you should wake before I return, remember, he's the Prince of Wales. Aye, and I'm the Princess Elizabeth. That makes it easier. <laughs> the king must rest, my lord. I can spare you but a few moments. A few moments will serve, Master Physician. I thank you. Well, sir, replied the porter, because there's much more light. 
right here. Sire. Sire. But now. It is Sudbrook who speaks, Your Majesty. I'm tired, Sudbrook. Tired. I have a grievous duty to perform. So painful I can scarcely speak it. Say what you must and let me rest. Your trust has been betrayed. How so? Did you not command that no man may speak of the prince's infirmity? Who speaks of it? Sire. Who speaks, I say? <coughs> My lord Hartford. Hartford? Rumour has it he intends a marriage between his daughter and the prince. He openly speaks of the need for stability. And thus, as protector to one and father to the other, his power is supreme. It is only rumour, sire, but uh, while he remains close to the prince... My dream is now made flesh. No one, not even Hartford, bears my trust. Place your trust in me, sire. My son must be protected. Aye, and shall be, your majesty, with my life. Prepare a warrant for the tower. The tower? To await trial. By your father's command. But why? You're my friend. Aye. And this, my lord, bears witness to it. My trial shall be a fair one. Be of good heart, my lord. Time to wait, young sir. Come now, it is late, and we must travel. Sent no one. Then there's mischief here. But why? 